live. Remember X. Okay. Amen, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise it's good Lord. to be with you again this week. I'm Pastor Anthony L. Walker coming to you from Transformation Ministries located at 115 Carthy Avenue in Fayetteville, Georgia. It's good to be with you one more time. And as always, I would like to direct you to tm-church.com. That's Transformation Ministry website so you can uh, know the who, what, when, why, and where of what's happening at Transformation <laughs> Ministries. And again, always, we are a teaching ministry. And I like to uh, claim that of, of Transformation Ministry, that we like to teach the word because people will perish for a lack of knowledge. And we want you to have knowledge. We want you to have uh, not just knowledge, but spiritual knowledge to open up your, your spiritual eyes. And we want you to not just have knowledge, but have understanding of that knowledge. And not just have understanding of that knowledge, but have the wisdom to know how to apply that knowledge that you will now understand to your everyday life because it's so important. Mm -hmm. because ignorant is not bliss and uh, the word of God is true and it's the only truth in this world it's, it's the truth that supersedes any other thing that uh, says that it's truth and so um, it's a pleasure today um, that we have a special guest speaker uh, with us today is the bishop, the doctor, we call him Pastor Rajendra Kumar Yelimeli, and he's coming to us from India, all the way from India. He's part of Cyan Assembly Church, which is SAC Ministry, and uh, it's it's a pleasure. I've had opportunity of having him here uh, maybe three years ago when I first uh, started the ministry, and it's an honor and a privilege to have him here again. Um, Pastor Rajendra, you know, he's a busy man. And, you know, a lot of times we, we say that we're busy. We're too busy, but we're busy with the wrong thing. And I've heard that busy, B-U-S-Y, is an acronym for being under Satan's yoke. But Pastor Rajendra, he's busy doing the things of God. And this this guy, when I say busy, I mean, uh, maybe he'll, he'll, um, he'll uh, just tell you more about himself. But I know on Sundays he has about four services, church services, uh, that he attend to or go to. And every day he's doing something in the name of the Lord. Um, and so when you're busy like that, that's not being under Satan's yoke. That's being, that's blessed under the, under the, the, the almighty God. And so he's being used. He's the hand, the feet, the voice of God who goes to so many people taking care of those who are in need. So um, his his resume, I put his bio, it's out there. I'm not going to read it because then we'll, I'll use up most of the service. But I have placed it out on my Facebook page, uh, Anthony Walker, but it's also in the Transformation Ministries uh, email, our uh, emails that goes out in the distribution. And it's also on the web page. If you go to the FYI menu, you can read that long bio of what Pastor Rajendra is busy with on a daily basis. And so, um, like I said, I'm not going to get into that, but uh, I will introduce him, my friend. Uh, he's uh, uh, he's all he's here. He's visiting the United States, and he's everywhere uh, preaching and teaching and fellowshipping with um, many churches here. And if you would like to have him here, he will give you the information on how to contact him. You might be able to catch him while he's here. Um, we have to see, check his calendar and see if he's available. But without further ado, I'd like to um, welcome uh, Pastor Rajendra, as I call him, my friend. Uh, sometimes just Raj, but that, that's just for those who personally know him. But it's good to have you, Pastor Rajendra. Thank you so much. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the floor is yours. Hi, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, I think. So. <laughs> So how are you all? Blessed. Wonderful, wonderful. It's really a pleasure, honor uh, to be with you. <laughs> Can I uh, get that off, actually? Uh, it's really a pleasure and honor to be with you all this afternoon. And I thank God for this wonderful opportunity which God has given me to come to the Transformation Ministries with our dear brother, and my wonderful friend, uh, none other than Pastor Anthony Walk. And thank you, the First Lady, and I uh, love all the congregation. Thank you, my friend Joe, for coming, you know. Really appreciate it. Uh, <clears throat> 
transformation. Uh, surely we need when you get transformed only. That's how you will be working for the Lord. As our dear brother pastor has been introducing me, I've been used for the last 30 years for doing God's work in the pagan country, India. And how can you do the work without you get transformed? So transformation is necessary for each one of us unless you get transformed. That's what we read from uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. That's very important. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's called repentance. Yes. Repentance is nothing but your mind get renewed. Repentance is a word in the New Testament. The Greek word for, for, for the repentance is metanoi. That is a Greek word, metanoi. The metanoi means change of mind. So change of mind is necessary for each one of us. So Jesus was preaching about changing of mind. When your mind is being renewed, that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. My brothers and my sisters, this is really a wonderful time to be with you all this afternoon at Transformation Ministry. And really, when our love has been transformed, and God will use you, each one of you in this room, in a mighty way, that you will never be the same again. For the transformation, this is very important. Do not be confirmed with this word. But transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that happens only through the word of God. My brothers and my sisters. Can I get this light off? Please? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, when you see a caterpillar, the caterpillar is, no one likes a caterpillar. But a caterpillar is the one being transformed to a butterfly. And that's called transformation. So the caterpillar no one likes, but butterfly everyone likes. Caterpillar is the one who eats the mud, who is the dirt, who eats the dust of the ground. And that's how it lives. But butterfly never eats the mud and the dust. It is going to eat of honey. Yeah. And when your life is being transformed, you are not interested to hear or listen to all kind of these worldly things. But you will be surely interested <laughs> to hear God's word. And this God's word is honey. It's like a honey. And that's what the transformed person will do. He likes to eat honey. Enjoys it. And you taste it. It's so delicious. The caterpillar scrawl, crawl on the ground. Never a caterpillar can fly. But when the caterpillar is being transformed and became a butterfly, oh, now it can fly. <laughs> what a wonderful people we are in Christ. Before, we could not move forward, you know. And now we are growing in the Christ. We will be so much, you know, you know, flying like butterfly, not crawling. Caterpillar doesn't look good, but a butterfly is very beautiful. Our lives have been transformed. That's how you look so beautiful in Christ. My brothers and my sisters, I just want to encourage you this morning. When your lives have been transformed, you will be, never be the same again. 
and you will be used by God in a wonderful way that God can be using you for his glory and his honor. So today's my topic is when you've been transformed into God's image, when you've been transformed, when your minds have been renewed, as a believer of Christ, we all need prayer. So my question today for you, all of you, why a believer needs prayer? The topic of the message will be, why do we need prayer? What is the necessity of prayer? Why you want to talk with God? Prayer means people think that, you know, I go in prayer talking with God. But actually, it is God who wants to talk with you too and want to spend some time with you. You know, but we are not available to God. And that's a problem. We don't have time for God. See an example, your prime minister or a president. Biden, President Biden calls me and says, Rajendra Kumar, you came from India, Vishwara, India. I want to talk with you. Can you give me time? So the president of your country, United States of America, calls me and wants to talk with me. And if I say, sorry, president, I am so busy. I could not talk with you. What a fool I am. Just imagine what a fool I am. Because the great man who rules the country of United States of America want to talk to this man who came from India and I don't have time. What is this? He wants to talk with me. He wants to spend some time with me. But just imagine, it is not the president of United States who wants to talk with you. It is the God, the Almighty, the creator of the universe wants to talk with you. But we don't have time for him. And that's a problem. We don't have time. When you spend time with God, then God will reveal God beautiful things for you. The things you don't know. So today's my topic will be why a Christian, a transformed person need to pray, need to talk with God. Before we go into that, what is prayer actually? Prayer is talking to God and listening to God. Prayer is addressing to God. You are addressing to God. That is the reason. Hallowed be your name. Father in heaven. We talk Father in heaven. We are addressing God. Prayer is fellowshipping with God. You know, fellowship is very important. When Adam was made, before Adam was made, God was talking about everything was good, 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 good. good. In the first chapter, last words, he says, very good. What he made was very good. But in the second chapter, he says it's not good. What is not good? It's not, not good for man to be alone. Why? Why a man should not be alone? Because God wants him to have a fellowship. The fellowshipping is very important. He needs wife to have a fellowship with his wife. And together, they fellowship with the holy God, the wonderful God. And when they do fellowship and they give birth to the child and you know three people come now. That's the reason you read in the Bible where two or three gather in my name, I am there. Mm -hmm. Who are those two? The two are the man and the woman, the wife and the husband, mm -hmm. you know, together as a family. Two. If you don't have children, two, but I'm there. If you have a child, if you have a children, two or three. <laughs> Gather together, and I'm there. My presence is there. What a great God I serve. My brothers and my sisters, prayer is fellowshipping with God. Prayer is seeking God's favor. In Exodus chapter 32, verse 11 says, But Moses tried to pacify God. The Lord is God. O Lord, he said, Why are you so angry with your own people whom you brought from the land of Egypt? With such great power and with such strong hand. What he's trying to do. 
is trying to seek the favor of the Lord. And that is what prayer is. Prayer is pouring out one soul to the Lord. As Hannah in 1 Samuel, first verse 15, first chapter, 15th words, you see, she poured out her heart to the Lord. That is prayer. She was asking God, my brothers and my sisters, for our ministry to grow, for our work in the Lord, for anything, for the help we need. Prayer is the alternate situation. Nothing can help us, only through prayer. And prayer is so important that many times we neglect to pray. We neglect to pray. You, need, you see the disciples? The disciples have keenly observed Jesus for the last three years, more than three and a half years. They've seen miracles. They've seen many people got healed. They've seen Jesus walking on the sea. They've seen so many miracles. But never, none of the disciples have asked, Jesus, please teach us how to walk on the water. Never asked. Please teach us how to heal the sick. Please teach us how to multiply five bread and two fish and feed many people. They never asked, Jesus, teach us how to raise the dead. They never asked how to cast away the demon spirit. But they asked one thing, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Why? Why did they ask, teach us how to pray? Because they have seen Jesus every day, getting early in the morning, spending time in the presence of God. He's talking to the Almighty, his Father in heaven. And when they see him Spending time in prayer and coming and doing miracles. They want that power. And prayer got power. A prayerless church is a powerless church, one person says. A prayerless pastor is a powerless pastor. A prayerful church is a powerful church. A prayerful pastor is a powerful pastor. A prayerful believer is a powerful believer. But many times we neglect prayer. We think more important other things rather than the prayer. And the, today's focus is, I want to focus more on prayer because prayer is very important. And I, I'm going to talk about why we need to spend more time in the presence of God. Why we need to pray. Why a believer need to pray. Because in my life, in my ministry, in the work we've been doing in a pagan country, India, we thought to prayer, we could not have been done all what we are doing right now. It is only through prayer. He never get credit for anything. It's only by talking to God and asking God and seeking God. He supplies all our needs. Recently also, we have been having a problem because the children are walking and going. We got an old van and that old van was working for so many years. And now it's got rotten up. It has been, you know, not been useful. And God supplies all your needs, my brothers and my sisters. When you ask God, when you seek God, he will open up the doors. He will open up what you need. You just pray to God, that's all. We don't have finances. We don't have resources. But when we pray, God opens up. That's what, you know, every one of us, we neglect prayer thinking that we are so being discouraged, disappointed. We don't want to pray. Bible says, prayer is pouring out one soul to God. That's what Hannah was doing in the Old Testament. She did not have children. She was a barren for many years. And a lot of problems for her. Anyone, anyone, no one is loving. Even, even you know, a lot of things happening in her heart. She was so discouraged and disappointed. But she never felt that I'm not going to talk to God. I'm going to report this to God. I'm going to ask God. And she was leaning on God. What happened? God opened the door. She asked for a boy. If you don't have a children, what is what happens if you have a girl? Why can't you ask any child is better, Lord? Why does she want to have a boy? Do you think that? Why she asked for a boy? 
because our prayers should not be conformed to this world our prayers should not be the worldly prayer prayers our prayer should not be the selfish prayers we are talking to the almighty god in every religion there is a word called prayer in every religion people will pray even muslims pray hindus pray buddhists pray but what the difference between you because you are praying to the living god you are praying to the almighty god and god answers prayers god listen to your prayers and that's the reason you are talking to the real god the true god the mighty god as we have sung awesome god and when god hears your prayers ah sometimes we pray but we don't listen to god god speaks to you through prayer you can speak to him she asked for a boy you know why because she was thinking about the need of the church a need of the temple that there was a priest so there eli who was a chief priest his sons are priests doing priest work but they are not good they do not know god they were doing all sorts of things which god is angry with now she wants a son so that she can dedicate that son to the ministry are we praying prayers which really need for the work are we doing the selfish prayers many times we do the selfish prayers when you pray god will surely answer he is the god in heaven and god answers our prayers crying out to heaven is the prayer prayer means knowing god what are you going to know knowing god's will in your life so that it will determine what i should do sometimes we don't know what to do why because we are not asking god we are not talking with god we will be not knowing his will so when i came to the ministry you know whether i have to do the work or not how could i know and the life has been transformed when i was seeking god god calling for the work of I was been preaching in different places at the age of 17 18 19 I got saved at the 15 and you know at the age of 19 God said to me start the church 7 <laughs> 19 years boy starting a church in a pagan country just imagine that but when God tells you because when you talk to God God will reveal God will reveal to you God will tell you what to do. We are not praying enough. We are not seeking God. And that is a problem. My, my brothers and my sisters, when you seek God, God will surely open up the doors for you. But when we don't seek God because we don't want to spend time with God, when we close our eyes, or oh, darkness comes and we are afraid of that when just immediately you'll open our eyes because you don't want to spend more time but just examine how much time we are spending in the presence of god in prayer how much we are seeking god prayer is from hebrew chapter 4 verse 16 says so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious god there we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most so prayer means approaching god's throne so that we can boldly come to the throne to our gracious god there we will receive his mercy prayer is a place we receive mercy and we'll find grace so that we'll get the help from god what we need it most as i was sharing in the breakfast of the men's you know one lady from egypt she is a very good lady a godly lady and her husband is not changed since this man has accepted the lord oh, sorry this woman has accepted the lord he want to kill him kill her so what happened is he wants to make some excuse saying that a reason to kill her so he said 
get me the keys of the my cupboard. And he lost that keys. His wife is searching all the house, but she could not find. The reason, only reason she could, he could found is because you did not get my keys, I'm going to kill you. What is that? He was so arrogant, man. In Egypt, it has happened really. recently. There was a post. This woman just started praying to God. And seeking God's will. That's what the Bible says. When you come to the throne. You will receive his mercy. And that's how she received the mercy. And God was telling her what to do. So. Her husband said. You did not find the keys. I'm going to kill you. So this is the day I'm going to kill you. Then uh, his wife said. Okay. I'm ready to die. But before I die. I want to prepare a nice dish for you. A nice, wonderful meal for you. And that will be my last, you know, meal that I can share with you. We we'll both eat together. And after that, you can kill me. Oh, okay, that's a good. So uh, he said, okay, uh, so I'll get something, you know, like, so that you can cook for me. So he went to get some chicken, but he could not get the chicken. He went to beef, but his desire was to eat fish. So he went and got fish and his wife prepared a nice dish with the fish. And finally they both together eat, eaten the food and you know they had their dinner and after that the husband said now it's time for me to kill you because your last desire has also been fulfilled. He took a gun and is going to shoot her. So before shooting her the wife said give me one minute and she brought the keys and gave it to her husband. And the husband was trembling like anything. He was shaking. He was afraid of what happened because he knows what he has done. He was just accusing her wife. The keys, he did not leave it at home actually. actually. While he's coming on the way in Egypt, he threw his key, keys in the river Nile River. So purposely he has done that. And he knows that his wife could not give him keys. It is impossible for her to give keys. But this wife is serving a God. Mm -hmm. And a almighty God who does miracles. And she just prayed to God. And God gave her a wisdom to say to her husband. Let me meet, prepare a meal before I die. That was the only thing she said. Why did she tell that? Because that was the wisdom that God has given her. And she prayed. So how did she find the keys? Which was fallen in the river? Which she threw down the, in the river? Because when she was preparing the meal. And she was doing the fish, you know. Cutting the fish. In the belly of the fish she could found this case. And that's how. See, this man got trembling and gave his heart to the Lord and that's the day he accepted the Lord my brothers and my sisters sometimes we think oh prayer what is this but the prayer is the one now when we were doing the ministry there were only few people very few people only one or two people we I ministered I am lonely person alone because I came to do my studies at that time at the age of 19, I was doing my engineering studies. So I went to a place called Vijavada, where, you know, I'm doing the ministry right now, but my place is Vaisak, Vishakapatnam, that is a seaport area. So I traveled 400 kilometers to go to this place for doing my studies, because I got a seat over there for doing my engineering studies. So, but God has a purpose for me. Then I went there. See, I was doing my studies, but I was being invited so many places to preach God's word and to share God's word, to share my testimony. One day, as I told you, God spoke to me to start a church at the age of 19. That's how I started the work. And now when I'm doing starting the work, how will people come? There's a new area, new place from my college. I have to take a bus, travel two hours, travel two hours to go to that place where I'm right now do the ministry. And there were only... You know, one person comes, two person comes. But I never got disappointed. 
because god has a plan for me and that is the reason god sent me to this place my place is not that my native place is also not that i am coming from another city travel 400 km doing my studies and now i come to this place traveling 2 hours for doing the ministry in the slum area and no one responds to me i took some tracks go how to how house to house distribute tracks say hello how are you you know and making friendship slowly and steadily within just you know few months i could get people and but there is no church because i was a young boy i could not afford to pay my school bill you know tuition bill and you know my food expenses my dad has to send me and how can you rent a house to conduct a church service so you know where my church service was my church service was on the road side on the road on the road we used to do the ministry i used to preach on the road and people started coming 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 so that more people started coming so we have to have a tarpanas put on on the road no sound system no music nothing how oh, started growing slowly and steadily we bought a house for rent and that's how we started the church all that the church has been growing my father came saw what i been doing he borrowed a loan from a bank and he gave me the money to be buy a piece of property where out right now the church is there and but we don't have money for building up the building so we bought the some hoods some hood sticks and then all the you know like a uh, a uh, leaves and other things and dry leaves and put it on like a thatched house and that's our church and rain comes the rain will be in the church even when the sun you know no need of big lights for like this <laughs> because the sun can peep inside the small holes from the leaves and uh, we can have the sunlight too and that was the ministry but now we are no more in that thatched house or thatched hut God does miracles when you seek his face and that's what prayer means prayer means you are approaching boldly to the throne of our gracious god that we will receive his mercy not only by forgiving our sins but he will you will receive his mercy for doing things in this world we will find grace and he will help us in second chronicles also 7 chapter 14 verse if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from heaven and will forgive their sins see i'll i'll forgive their sins and restore their land my brothers and my sisters are we seeking god in distress situations sometimes we say that we pray to god but are you listening when god speaks to you it is good that you speaking to god but the prayer god speaks to you are you listening one man went to a big hill and he started praying he climbed up a big hill a mountain like that and he started praying praying so that He was so focused in praying, he forgot of what is happening. It became so dark. It became night, and now he could not come. Sorry for that. He could not come. So what happened was, so he could not get away from the hill, the mountain, because <laughs> now it became so dark. Now his prayer was, Lord, help me. to reach my home safely so while he was getting down from the hill he slipped because he stood on a rock and the rock fell down and he started falling down he said lord 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 please help me please help me then he got hold of a branch of a tree while he was falling he got a branch hold of a tree and he was holding that branch and he was asking lord please lord please lord save me oh lord protect me then he could hear the voice lord speaking to him my son 
leave the branch you are holding on. <laughs> then he said, Lord, what are you saying? Can you repeat me once again? <laughs> leave the branch you are holding on. You want me to come so soon to your heaven? <laughs> I'm not going to come. I'm not going to leave this branch. So he's holding the branch for the whole morning till the morning comes. The whole night he was holding on to the branch. When morning came, the little bit light comes. He looked down and he was just hanging. He was just up to the ground, two feet. <laughs> now he jumped. But God told him last night, leave that. But you don't want to leave some of the things. When God said to leave, you have to leave. Some things we hold on to that. Abraham was blessed because God told him to leave him his household, to leave his country, to leave his relatives. When you leave, and I'm going to bless you. But when you hold on to some of the things, God cannot bless you. When God speaks to you through the word of God, God speaks through you, or you're listening. It's all not only praying, asking God for wisdom, asking God for, you know, when God speaks to you, are you listening to God? As I told you, I was doing the ministry there in the slums. When I was doing the small ministry, you know, people started coming and the road was fully jammed. Full packed on roads, people are coming. No church, first of all. So one man, his name is Narsima Rao. He was so furious against me. He came and said, hey, Rajan, Rajendra, never come back again. I'm going to kill you. I murdered three people and I go to prison and come back. I have a lot of political influence. I'm going to kill you. Just get away. Don't come back again. Okay. If you're going to come back, I'm going to kill you. I was just a 19 years old boy. And this man, I inquired about it. He's really a murderer. He really killed three people. He's like a rowdy shutter over there. I went back home. Then I said, I'm not going to go back. I was praying to God. Lord, show me in another village. Show me in another place that I could go. And Lord said, go to the same village. You want me to go to the same village? You want me to go there? Yeah. The Lord said. And I asked Lord, Lord, you want me to go there and uh, he's going to kill me. So you want me to die? Then he said, when you came for the ministry itself, you took the cross. <laughs> what do you mean by taking the cross and following me? Any moment, I'm ready to lay down my my life for the Lord. Because he laid down his life for me. And I should be ready for doing anything for the Lord. Are we ready for that? See, when you seek God, God will tell you what to do. As that man was holding on to the branch. But he could not leave. But when God tells you to do something, when you listen, he will bless you. I went back there. I, I went back and uh, he was so furious. We had a song. That song was against their gods. Because they have eyes could not see. They have mouth they could not mouth, speak. They have ears could not hear. Those are the you know stanzas were there in the song. And he brought police. The police were back and I was preaching. People are looking back. I can understand something is happening at my back. But I never stopped. I started preaching. They were waiting for me. And they also heard the word. And after that, I went to them. What's the problem? You, you know, you, it is not about you. Send the person who sang the song. And we're going to arrest him because he sang a song which is against some of the religions. I said, okay, I'm the pastor here. 19 years old. I said, I'm going to come with you. No need. I said, yeah, I'm going to be. I'm the one who given him permission to sing. So I told the congregation who are on the roadside, no church. Okay, they want to take him to the police station. I'm going to the, go to the police station. Then all the congregation who are sitting there, nearly 200 to 250 people, joined me to go to the police station. So when all these people are going, you know, I started, started singing and uh, singing on the roads and go to the police station. The policeman asked, so why did you sing this kind of songs? He said, it is in the Bible. 
show me in the bible where it is so he showed in the bible then the police officer say they sang the song which is in their bible so what is your problem the problem is solved so this man after few years you know because he was so furious because what happened was his wife means he has another girlfriend and he was having an illegal relationship with her. and this girl comes to her ministry work and then she got changed and she don't want to go back again that was the reason it seems he was so furious because people he this man comes to this village and changing people i'm not changing people it's god who's changing their lives it is god who's been transforming their lives so one day this man got paralysis his mouth was turned in different direction his hand he could not lift the hand he, he could not one of these one of his leg could not he could not walk so he was so depressed so discouraged and he was at the home what happened was his wife was telling him can you please call pastor what he will pray for you and you will be healed i believe that because when he is praying as like asking god prayer god lot of power you know the, the god jesus is healing so why he said i am not going to call him because i am the one who has cursed him ridiculed him took to the police station i will not do it but finally his wife's words he listened to and he called me i was there at his home i prayed for him we asked for the congregation to come and when we are praying god was telling to me rajendra ask him to come in front we going to pray for him so when god was talking to me i asked him to come in front and we laid hands on him people laid hands on him we started praying lord heal this man lord this man will be a living testimony in this area oh lord be with him lord prayer we are praying to god seeking god so what happened you know god was speaking to me again and saying richandra lay hands on his mouth and pray instead of laying hands on his mouth i opened my eyes and i saw his mouth was not at all good for me to touch I said lord is it necessary for me to touch his mouth when i can lay hands on his head and pray do you don't love this brother is he not a brother if your brother is suffering like that will you not pray for him touching his mouth oh i'm so sorry i touched his mouth and i prayed instantly i can see a miracle in front of my eyes that his mouth came into original position his hand is like he started walking living examples living testimonies living you know miracles and this man became a testimony in that village now he carries the bible in the church he comes and people are amazed this murderer this rowdy shatter this man got changed how god changes people only through prayer prayer is very important my brothers and my sisters why we need prayer the important thing why we need prayer is first it god chases your worry people are so worried about things happening people are worried about finances people are about worried about the future many things we are worried about but what bible says according to philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7 Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. <laughs> What a great word! Don't worry about anything. NLT Bible says, instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need, and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which extends everything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Dear brothers and my sisters, do not worry. But anything, anything you don't worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. But are we doing that? So what happens when you pray? Then God chases out all the worry in us. actually christian people should not worry for the things what is happening 
Jesus, when he preached about worry, when we look into Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, you can see what Jesus was telling. No one can serve two masters for you will hate one and love one another. So he was talking about that and he said, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Is in life more than food and your body more than clothing? So what he's trying to tell us, what Jesus is trying to tell us is trusting God. Prayer means when you trust God, seek God. He is the one who has given you life. Which is more important? Clothing, food is more important or life is more important. When God can give you life, he cannot give you food for sustaining your life. Can he not give clothes for you? He is the one who has given you life. But we are worried. What is the important thing God has given us? <laughs> People are so much worried about the things. But Jesus preached about not to worry. Jesus preached, you know, there are so many reasons in that verses when we read from Matthew 6, from 24, 26 to last ending of the verse, you see why you no need to worry. In the 26th chapter, 26th words, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you for more valuable to them? Are you, aren't you more valuable to him than they are? So what he's talking about? You don't need to worry the second reason because you and me are so precious. You and me are so precious people. Why are you worrying? And that is the reason. No need of worrying. That's what the Bible says. You don't worry for anything. But, but pray, pray, pray. That means pray for everything. Then God will give you the real peace and understand. Real peace which extends everything you can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds. That means you will have a peace of heart. You will have a peace of mind. My brothers and my sisters. Many times we lose, you know, hope in God because when we see things happening. As I was sharing in the breakfast also, my, my mother got terminal cancer. And doctor said, she's going to die. Just in a few weeks, maybe one week is the maximum, he said. And she looks that she's going to die because she became so weak. She became like a skeleton. No muscles. And no one who sees her says that she's going to live. But I have a hope in Christ. I was just a 15 years boy at that time. I don't want to lose my mom. I said, Lord, I was a newborn Christian. I was a baby Christian at that time. But to strengthen my faith, I was Asking God, Lord, please do. I need my mom. Without mom, I cannot live. Please, Lord, please, Lord. No one is expecting that she's going to live. But God spoke to me through the word of God saying that I'm going to give your mom a living water. I could not understand what was the living water. But I rushed to the hospital and told my mom, Mom, you're not going to die. God is going to give you living water. My mom was not able to hear me. I do not know what happened. But that same night, my mom's tongue got completely dried up. And she could feel the droplets of water falling from heaven, the lightning coming in front of her. And the next day, she was okay. The next day, she was out of the bed. Doctor said within seven days, she's going to die. But the living example, I'm telling, within seven days, she came out from the hospital. And she lived another 25 years. And that's the God I serve. I serve a God, a real God, a true God. Who does mighty God, who does a mighty work, who does a miracles, who is same yesterday, today, and forever. Unchanging God. But the problem is we are so worried about things. He is the one who has given us life in you, and He's going to take care of the needs what you are needing. And He is the one, He's saying, You are so precious, precious than birds, because when He can take care what the birds need. He can take care of the needs of the birds. Oh, aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? 
we are more valuable and more precious. That is the reason he is telling us not to get worried about. But we are worried about many other things. 27th verse says, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? That means worries cannot add anything for us. It is not helpful for us rather than it is harmful to us. Because of the worry, we get blood pressure more. We get all sorts of diseases. Because it is not helpful, but it, instead of that, it is harmful. But still, we worry. In 28th verse, we read, Jesus is speaking. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. Oh, what a beautiful. So that means God doesn't ignore the people who depend on him. He will not ignore the people when you rest on him, when you depend on him. That means he can take care of the lilies. He makes beautiful and that's so beautiful. Even Solomon, the king who has all things in this world could not dress like that. I am the one who gives you. I am the one who can give you dress, all the things, what you need. He will supply all the needs to the riches and glory of Christ Jesus. But are we depending on him? Are we seeing the circumstances and being confused? Because when people saw in front of them, there was a sea, a big river, you know, big sea called Red Sea. And the back of them, they could see what? The Egyptians. They are worried. They saw that we are stuck. No more way. Where we can go? They cannot go to right or they cannot go to left. They cannot move forward. They cannot go backward. Where they go? They are stuck. And that's what God wants to know them. That they, they were thinking that they were stuck. But that's what's God's plan. God can make a way when you depend on God. But what these people are doing, these people are crying. They're praying but not depending on God. But there was one man named Moses who depended on God. And he said, you're going to see today America. God is going to do America. And he has done America. God will do miracle when you depend on him. On the 30th words, when you read 30th and 31st words. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why? You have a so little faith. Worry are the people who have very little faith. When we are worrying means that we are showing lack of faith. Worrying means we are not understanding God. That is the problem. That means we are behaving like an unbeliever. We are behaving like a pagan person. So you and me are being called not to worry. Just pray. And prayer chases all the worry. And 33 words says, it keeps you from challenges of God. See, worry sometimes when you worry, you will not seek the kingdom and righteousness. The seek, seek the kingdom and God, kingdom of God above or else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So when you worry, you will forget to seek this kingdom. When we worry, we forget to live righteously. And that was the problem. That is the problem that is keeping us from challenges that God wants you and me to pursue. That means the worry is diverting our attention. My brothers and my sisters, these are the seven reasons of why you should not worry. The last reason says, so don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow's will. Tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. My brothers and my sisters, living one day at a time keeps us from being worried. But we are worried because we are worrying for the future. So 
Before I conclude, I want to tell you that the prayer is very important in our lives. For all that we are doing right now, it is only through prayer. We have been working with the slums. We are working with HIV patients. We are working with the lepers. Still the lepers are existing in our country. They don't have limbs. They don't have hands. They don't have fingers. But you know, they accepted the Lord and they give a beautiful claps to praise God. They worship the Lord with all their heart and soul and mind. They are so enthusiastic. They are so loving to the Lord. We encourage them, one day you're going to have a body where you no need to have, you know, a body which without, don't know, without limbs, without fingers, without a nose. But your body will be transformed. Your bodies will be changed. You will be having a glorious bodies. And we are going to hang in heaven. So we encourage them. We work with the widows who lost their husbands. We work with the orphan children. How could we do all this work? Only seeking God. Only through prayer. I just want to encourage this afternoon for each one of you. I know that what a struggle you are going through. Or what the problem you are going through. But I am here to encourage you. Selling my own example. My own ministry. My own work. My own family. That I have been undergoing. I have undergone many, many problems. But it is through God. We are, moving. we are living in a country where there is no safety. There is no safety for Christians. People have been killing Christians. Recently in Manipur, so many Christians have been killed. Churches, nearly 500 churches have been demolished. Pastors have been killed. We are living in an unsafe zone. But still, we are striving hard. Why? Because we have been in God's hand. Whether you want us to come early, we will go. Otherwise, you want us to stay here and preach the gospel. And win songs for his kingdom. We will be doing that 24-7. And that's the passion that we have. I just want to encourage this afternoon each one of you. To pray, to pray, to pray. Never cease out. Pray without ceasing. God is going to bless you. Thank you for having me Pastor Anthony Walker. Thank you for having me all of you. And really enjoyed being with you. Thank you. Let's pray. Let's close our eyes. So let's stand up. And uh, dear brother will close us in prayer. sincerely before I get into prayer I sincerely hope that um, you would not just hear what uh, Pastor Virginia was, was preaching and, and telling you about the miracles of God and what God will do through prayer uh, prayer changes things you have to believe that that's the faith part and uh, we have a similar testimony um, with the with the experiences and, and the miracles that we've experienced uh, things at the hand of God um, we, we, our paths are different but our experience and our testimonies appear to be the same from based off what I was hearing Amen. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we don't all have the same results in every area our timing of things may be different um, and I'm still looking for the what God has well, what was prophesied for transformation ministries um, but I've seen so much and, and I've watched God do so much uh, with so many people. Mm. We're so starting with so little, and so I I have faith. I've never lost my faith. Amen. Um, I don't worry mm. uh, about things. Do I get disappointed? Yeah, I get disappointed, but I don't worry because I trust God, and I know that it's, things are in His timing. And Amen. you have to do the same. Uh, sometimes things will get worse before they get better. You know, sometimes. Your blessing may come on the other side, mm -hmm. but you know this world is temporal, yes. and so we have to prepare our souls. Uh, we, it, and time is, is short, uh, and we, we can't even say when Jesus returns because we may leave ourselves before His return. Mm -hmm. So we have to be ready. We have to pray now. We have to trust God now. We have to uh, faith. We have to show our faith now. Um, but thank you, Pastor Regina, for that. Thank so. You. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for today. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord God, for the here and now, for what you are doing right now. We're thanking you, Lord God, for what you have already done for us in the past. Yes. We know you're no respect of persons, Lord God. We know that what you have done for one, that you would do for uh, the many, for the individual. 
And so I thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing right now in people's lives. There are people who will be changed by this word. All they have to do is trust in the Lord uh, and uh, lean out into their own understanding, but allow the word of God to transform their lives. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful for what God is going to do in the future, in your future. He is going to change your life forever and forever. But you just have to let go and allow God to do what God does. Uh, it's not a miracle to him, but they are miracles to us. Mm. And we have testimonies. And you may have a testimony. And if you have it, then testify. Let people know the goodness of the Lord. Let him know what he's done. Mm. So, Father God, we, we ask, Lord God, that you will strengthen us, that you will encourage us, Lord God that you will continue to work in our lives, Lord God, and help us to not just um, sink deep in our own, um, on our own uh, thoughts and our own experiences, but that we allow you, Lord God, to take us to a new level, to a new mm -hmm. heights, to a new place in, in our life, in our, in our thoughts, in our heart, in our mind. And Father God, continue to cover us, continue to bless us, Continue to um, be our God, to be our God. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done. And everyone who is listening and praying right now, may you not be faint, may you not be weary, but let you be confident in, in the goodness of the Lord and what he can do in your life. So, Father God, we thank you because you are the God of, of all. And we bless your holy name, Lord God. Thank you for all that you have done. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We say amen. 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 Thank you so much. So next week, tune in. The message is subliminal. Subliminal. It's going to be a powerful message. Tune in next week. Thank you so much.